Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel Watch On Channel. It's been a very long time coming but now it's the time for my collection update, my watch collection update, state of my collection. So this is my entire collection here on this table and I actually also got a few watches incoming so this is actually not, it's my collection right now but it's it's I got a lot of watches incoming and this is just a part one of my collection video. I would like to do uh, a part two, my watch goals uh, for for the, the this year and also the, the, the coming years because uh, as you could probably imagine, I'm going to cut a little back on my collection. Uh, I am a collector, so I'm going to, I'm not ever going to be a one watch guy or five watch guy, but right now I have too many watches and it's just because I just enjoy watches too much. A lot of these watches are just really funny to own and, and I really enjoy them on, on different occasions during the year. There's no one, none of these watches are just staying in the box. All of these watches I have been wearing during the last year and some of them is, are my almost daily uh, watches, but I'm definitely wearing all of these watches sometimes during the, the year. Uh, some of them hasn't, haven't yet been worn uh, in this year 2017. So well, why not just get into the whole mess down here before we go in, into my main box and to my second box. So first off, uh, we could start with this one. Uh, and uh, this watch is the Christopher Walken Malvern Mark II, I believe it's called. This is an automatic Swiss made watch. It's uh, plated with 24 karat gold. So this is an a dress watch, automatic dress watch, which I, which I got at a very nice discount because often Christopher Watt clears out the remaining parts of the, the inventory. So a very nice automatic dress watch, which you will find a review of here on my channel if you're interested. Moving on, this is a Swedish watch. It's definitely not produced in Sweden, but it is a Swedish watch. And I have pulled out the crown since it's a quartz watch. I pull out the crown to save uh, on the battery, but you can just tuck in the crown and here you see it running. So this is a kind of a fashion watch from a very small watch brand called Grand Frank. Grand Frank are known for, mostly known for fashion clothing, especially the suits are very popular and the shirts, but they also do a line of watches, which you will, which I, I, I would, uh, called dress watches, but still you will also find a review of this watch on my channel. And this is actually a very nice uh, watch, I think. Uh, a very nice, uh, very affordable dress watch. Find the, re find the review of this watch if you're interested. So moving on, of course here, also reviewed uh, on my channel. This is the Glycine Combat Sub, as you can see here. This is an automatic Swiss made dive watch by the very famous watch company Glycine, with which was this year uh, acquired by Invicta watches. But this is, uh, and this you will see in my review, if you find the review on my channel, probably one of the best offering for a uh, affordable Swiss made dive watch. This is a very, very nice kind of desk diver dress watch in the root beer color. I really enjoy this watch, especially because it's so flat. So it really, just sits extremely nice on your wrist. Also, you can see the crystal is very flat and this very rough uh, leather strap is actually extremely comfortable. So one of my uh, Swiss dive watches, and I will probably at some point make a video just concerning my Swiss dive watch collection or maybe all my dive watches. So moving on to my, actually the newest watch in my collection, which I just picked up a, a couple of weeks ago when I went to Switzerland, to Zurich, for business, I picked up this Satina DS1 Himalaya Special Edition. So this is the Powermatic 80. This is, of course, a dress watch. And this is a special edition. I don't think it's a limit, limited edition, but a special edition uh, commemorating uh, a mission climbing one of the highest mountains in the Himalayas in 1960, where Satina tested how tough their watches were. And uh, the watches actually withstood the, the pressure and the, the harsh climate and really was working and functioning all the way through this climb. And this is a, a kind of a 
a celebration of 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 that very famous climb and this is um, one of the best affordable swiss dress watches you can acquire as you see down below the ds1 it's the powermatic 80 so this has a power reserve of 80 hours i haven't yet reviewed this watch but i will very soon so you'll be able to see a review of this satina ds1 himalaya special edition watch um, also a very beautiful case back with the sorry as you can see here a black pvd coated rotor and and this mountain shape and a very nice leather strap with a butterfly clasp as well but that was that one moving on to another swiss dress watch this is my tissot and i can't remember the exact uh reference number for this watch maybe it's back here on the back side yeah you have it here this is the reference number so this watch is a quartz watch uh, with a gmt function and a small seconds a date i put it on this uh, very nice uh, high quality leather strap it came on a bracelet but i really found that bracelet kind of uh, annoying because it somehow gets into the uh, hair on your arm on your wrist and it's just not really comfortable getting your hair pulled out uh, from your arm but this is a very nice uh, watch which i actually bought uh, in new york on wall street that is so uh, boutique on wall street so i'm i don't really wear this watch that much because i've got so many cool watches and the quartz watches often get pushed back into the line but this watch holds a nice history uh, to me uh, visiting wall street and the whole how my life was at that point so i i enjoy this watch and it's a it's a nice part of my collection okay and this is one of the newer ones this is uh, one of the the recent addi additions to my collection and this is the marlow sherwell this is a dress watch from a micro band brand in oxfordshire in great britain uh, called Marlow and this is a very special piece since it's a hand wound piece watch um, with a Chinese seagull movement you will also find a review of this watch and this is like a to me this is a, a very just a casual kind of everyday uh, watch I don't even it is a dress watch but I don't really know how much I consider it dress watch or use it as a dress watch it's much more like a, a very nice to wear kind of vintage inspired still very modern since it's 43 uh, millimeters in diameter inspired watch um, i just really like to wear this watch casually uh, actually this is often a watch that i put on when i get back home from from the office i take off one of all the other watches i have here and then i put on this watch a very nice piece you can find a review of this piece also on my channel and again uh, you can find a review of this watch this is of course a russian dive watch so if we look here this is the vostok amphibia you get the cyrillic uh, writing on the dial here so what's different with, with this watch is that i uh, applied i put on uh, this pepsi bezel uh, for this watch since the the one it came with was just so boring so plain so i thought that it looked really cool with um let me just get it started with the the pepsi bezel on this watch i also removed the horrible uh, silicone strap it came came on um, and put on this white uh, nato strap so this is like a very casual watch and i actually been using this watch when getting out when i was out running just to time the time uh, how, how, how long i had to to run to so just you can see it, it's bi-directional it's very strange but a very um, affordable i think i paid like 60 or 70 american dollars and it came straight from russia this watch but well i think at some point i will just probably uh, give this watch to someone i know because i don't really wear it but it's a fun piece it's a fun piece of a dive watch history so moving on to another dive watch this is a true vintage piece this is the tech Heuer 1000 and this is a quartz watch the history between this watch was that uh, they made it uh, because they were always at these kind of fairs where they got placed next to diving watch companies and at some point some of these diving watch uh, diving companies uh, equipment uh, companies they asked Ta Ta Hoyer, jack Hoyer, why don't you produce a affordable dive watch all dive watches are so expensive so he decided to really get of course 
inspired by the Rolex Submariner, which we will look at uh, just in a few minutes. Uh, and he produced this watch. So this is a true vintage piece. This is PVD uh, coated, and this is 18 karat uh, gold plated. So it's a uh, real gold, and it's just a very fun little piece. This is just uh, about 38 millimeters big in diameter. A very nice vintage dive watch with gold and black. And I really enjoy this watch. I think it's a, a very, very dressy watch. And and it's also probably the oldest watch in my whole collection, apart from this one down here. So a very nice um, kind of vintage dive watch, quartz watch, a uh, real looker, I think. So a very nice watch I enjoy immensely. I also got the original bracelet. Uh, which also comes in PVD and gold. So the oldest watch in my collection, this is an Atomic. So this is actually kind of strange. It's almost kind of scary because why did, why the hell did this watch start running? It's actually a manually, manually wound watch, but well, it's just start running. So that's, that's cool. I almost never wear this watch, but I think it's just such a cool watch with the cushion shape, uh, shaped case this little crown here the whole color scheme of this watch is just so 70s and i just really fell for it because it's like from what i know this is from the early 70s by a watch company called atomic which may be uh, affiliated with breitling i can't find out anything about this watch brand so if you have any knowledge about atomic watches a watch brand called atomic watches which is uh, defunct and has been for many years well then please let me know because then I would really like to know what this uh, watch is all about. It's a really fun, nice little piece. So it's just like almost seeing like a puppy or a little kitten you want to, to take in because they don't have any place to live. Um, well, it was the same when I, when I saw this watch on, on eBay. I just really needed to, to own this watch and, and, and take it in and take care of it. And maybe at some point I would, I would take it to a watchmaker to get it fully restored and serviced. But on the other hand, it's really cool how beat up it is. So it, it was extremely dirty when I got it, so I had to clean it up. A very nice watch. So moving on to a, a whole other uh, kind of dive watch. This is the Seiko, and I don't really remember the reference number for this. Maybe you can see it here. Maybe you can... Oh, I don't think we got the reference number here, but this is a solar driven dive watch. This is a 43 millimeter big dive watch. And I use this watch uh, for the gym because it's extremely nice to be able to act, um, to set the, the chronograph moving, uh, moving and then time down here. I time my uh, training. This is a, a 60 minute uh, chronograph. So a very, very nice chronograph watch, a high quality watch for a watch that is less than $200. It's quite amazing what you get here. You will find a review of this watch on my channel if you're interested. A really nice watch and probably the, the watch I'm using the most tool-like watch I have because I'm actually using it for, for the gym. So a very nice watch also during the summer when the sun is out. It's really nice to wear this watch. And moving on to another Japanese watch and this is a of course, the Orient. So this is the Orient Bambino version 4. You will find a review of this watch on my channel in the archives. This is probably the best affordable dress watch, automatic in-house movement dress watch you can find whatsoever. This watch I got for about 120 US dollars. And for what you're getting for that amount, it's just an amazing watch, both as a dress watch and a, and a more casual watch. Um, Everything is just uh, really nice. If you can just sense the sunburst, blue sunburst dial, and maybe they could just uh, have, have kept it down to maybe uh, 39 millimeters. I think it's just about 41 millimeters in diameter, but still a very nice dress watch. And actually uh, the leather strap, it's not the best leather strap you will ever uh, get, but still at this price point, a very nice watch. And you get this little crown here. It's, it's manually windable, also hacking. So, Quite amazing what you're getting for your money. A nice dress watch if you're looking for a, a dress watch. And, and of course, another Japanese watch. This is the Alpinist. And let me just get it started. So I believe this is the, the Seiko SARB017. This is a very famous watch that 
really goes back more than a hundred years, uh, this line of watches, and this is the latest edition uh, of this watch. You will, of course, find a review of this watch on my channel as well. A very, very nice kind of mutant between a tool watch and a dress watch. So with this watch, you get an inner rotating compass. You also get uh, date and of course uh, you, it's very legible because of the second hand and the, the pointy um, hour hand and minute hand which really makes you able to read the time very very precisely. Uh, this is uh, actually one of the fewer more affordable Seikos with uh, sapphire glass. So a very, very nice watch with an anti-shock, you can see the Dyershock 20 feet jewels and it's water resistant down to 200 meters. I um, decided to put it on this uh, uh, camouflage uh, military NATO strap, which I really think looks makes it a, a very tool watch uh, looking watch. But as you, when you see the finishing here, it's just as much a dress watch. It's just if you really want to just own free watches, this could, this could make it out for, for both your field watch, your uh, expedition watch and your dress watch. A very nice piece, piece which I really enjoy having in my collection. I don't wear it that often, but still it gets worn a couple of a couple of days a month and it's a real nice watch. So just before we get into my main box, let's just have a close look at this box. And of course, more Japanese watches here. This is of course the famous Seiko SKX009. As you see here, it's with the original bezel, insert the Pepsi, uh, but I put it on this calf leather strap because I really think that the, the Jubilee brace that it comes on is absolutely horrible. I uh, enjoy this uh, watch as a kind of a casual uh, watch. I have uh, not reviewed this watch, but I made a watch with the, the four things I really f uh, dislike about this watch. I'm sorry, it got a, quite a lot of hate because this is like a cult favorite. Everybody just loves this, loves this watch on YouTube. but. It has some pro problems, but for a dive watch with the history of this watch and what you're getting, the toughness, uh, durability of this watch, it's quite amazing that you can get a watch at this uh, low price point. And as you see here, I got other, other bezel inserts. Uh, here you get the Batman. Uh, here Down here you have the green one. Uh, I think that would be the Kermit. And uh, this is actually the one uh, that uh, came off my... Um, Vostok Amphibia. So it's down here. A very nice watch and with a leather strap it's really kind of a dressy type watch. A very cool watch which I actually get quite some compliments uh, for when I wear it. It's not that often but still I wear it. So now we're moving on to kind of my summer beta watches and this is a Citizen Pro Master Eco Drive. This is a watch you can buy at some... I actually saw it down to about $100 and the great thing about this watch is that it's kind of the perfect summer watch. It's durable, it's water resistant down to 200 meters and it's running as an as Citizen EcoDrive watch on sunlight and also artificial light, but especially sunlight. So with this watch, when you get it out in the sun and give it a, a, some hours in, in the sun, a full day in the sun, it will run for six months and not stop running. And it's actually kind of a, a dressy type watch, I think. A very nice watch, one of the first, uh, actually my first Citizen watch ever and a watch I really enjoy. So now you can see, actually if you just notice the second hand, that's quite funny. It jumps two seconds. This means that this watch needs to be charged out in the sun. When it's charged again, it will start to just uh, move by one second at a time. So I need to charge this watch. And staying within the Citizen EcoDrive uh, line of watches, this is another ProMaster. You will also find a review of both of these watches on my channel, of course. Um, this is the Blue Edition and this watch I bought this summer uh, in San Francisco, in Chinatown in San Francisco, where I found this uh, little uh, watch shop run by this uh, very nice old Chinese man who uh, he, he was actually uh, okay with me trying to heckling about the price. And this uh, was a watch I was wearing all that uh, very nice holiday in, uh, in California and Nevada in, in the US this summer, last summer. Um, a very nice watch. This is my uh, my absolute number one summer watch at the moment. I really enjoy it. The, the The rubber strap is just perfect, and it's just a very tough watch. And it being a watch running on sunlight is just a perfect summer watch. And you don't really 
at about two hundred dollars or less, you 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 really just get a, a watch that you're not too afraid uh, to wear on the beach or or beat up. So, moving into kind of a, one of the most affordable, bigger Swiss watch companies, this is Festina. And so, why do I wear? Uh, do I own this kind of of low level um, Festina chronograph watch? Well, this was actually. A gift from my girlfriend when we uh, were quite quite of uh, just getting into our relationship, and uh, well, I just thought it was totally great that she gave me a watch. And for what what it is, it's actually quite a cool watch with a lot of different functions. If, if you see the dial with the different chronograph functions, you get twenty four hours, you get sixty minutes, and you get sixty seconds as well. And uh, you get a tachymeter, and uh, also the lumen. This lumen, this watch is very, very nice. It's very easy to handle. The biggest problem is the setting the date. That's not really well made by Festina. It's of course a quartz watch, but everything is really well built. And actually, for a watch at this price range, I don't really actually know what how much it. It's probably you're probably able to buy this watch at uh, 250 to 400 uh, US dollars. It's actually quite a nice watch, and especially the bracelet. The bracelet, bracelet. I, I really like the the look of the bracelet, and it's extremely comfortable wearing the bracelet on this watch. So this is actually a bracelet that is it's it's a lot better than what you would actually think you got uh, with this watch. So a very uh, nice watch with some great memories, and just a, a watch that holds some emotion uh, for me. So I enjoy that one. So moving on to my field watch. And again, I'm sorry, I just can't remember the reference number of this one, but you will find a review on my channel for this watch. I haven't reviewed the Fistina, maybe I will do it at some point. So this is a field watch, and this is actually a very high quality uh, Seiko uh, 5 Sports field watch. You get a day-date complication, amazing loom, you got handing, uh, hacking and uh, manual winding. And also, I just wanted to show you with this watch also, I believe I paid just about 350 US dollars for this watch. You get this kind of very uh, cool tool watch um, looking movement. And I really think that uh, you, you wouldn't want a very decorated movement with this kind of tough field watch. You want a really kind of uh, industrial looking uh, movement, so that's just really great. You can see it's the 4R36A movement, 24 joules, and it's a Japan made uh, version. You will find a review of this on my uh, watch channel. It comes on this um, kind of uh, rough nylon uh, strap, but with this uh, leather interior, which makes it very nice and, and comfortable to wear. And it all also has a rotating bezel, unidirectional, which makes not that much sense since you don't have any minute uh, markings and it's not a dress watch, but still it's uh, water resistant down to 100 meters. A very cool, nice um, field watch, which I haven't worn for quite some time. So maybe I should just at some point bring out this watch. I actually kind of enjoy this watch. Um, it's a special Seiko watch. You don't see too many of these Seiko watches uh, here on YouTube. It's probably some of the other Seiko watches I have you see a lot more. And of course, this is one of the, the ones you see the, the most. This is uh, probably the most famous affordable uh, Seiko dress watch. This is the Cocktail Time or the Saab 065. And this is actually going out of production. This is being discontinued. So if you are looking for having this watch, getting this watch in your, in your collection, you should probably try to find uh, one of these uh, watches on, on eBay because they have uh, introduced two new models of the cocktail time, which uh, they have uh, put into the Precise line. Uh, absolutely amazing watches, uh, but this is just a, a fun piece, especially because of, of the this style, this kind of cocktail dial is just an amazing dial they put on this watch and this is a I put it on a blue leather strap because the one it came with was just horrible uh, the black leather strap it came came on but I really enjoy this watch uh, a lot and it's a nice part of my collection so let me just close down this bad boy and let's get into my main watch box 
And of course, this is where my most expensive uh, watches are. This is one of the the best pieces of my collection. A watch I really uh, yearned for uh, for a lot of years. This is this, uh, the Rolex GMT Master. Uh, not the GMT Master 2, but the Rolex GMT Master 167000. So this is um, the one with, with the non-independent uh, GMT hand. And I just really enjoy this watch. I think it's an absolutely beautiful watch. And this is from 1991, so it's just more than 25 years old, which, uh, depending on who you ask, actually makes it kind of a, uh, a vintage watch. And, um, well... If you know Rolex, you will know that this is a legendary watch. As you can see with the hour markings, uh, this watch is, uh, was treated with, uh, with tritium back in the days uh, for the looming, luminous material was tritium. And today it's completely faded. There's no loom whatsoever on this watch. Uh, but what is really, really great with this watch is that it, it, just, it just gets this really uh, beautiful yellow kind of, of uh, color with the with the hour markings, which is just absolutely amazing. I really, really love this watch. And this is a watch that is, of course, going to stay forever in my collection. It's a, it's a magnificent piece. So moving on to its uh, bigger brother, or maybe little brother, whatever you want to, to call it. This is, of course, the Rolex Submariner No Date. So this one is the 14060. Uh, uh, this one was produced in 2001. And this is with the... I think it's uh, the, the you know the super or what the material the Rolex uses, and this just lights up like a candle at night. This is uh, probably the the watch I wear the most of all my watches because it's just so it's so casual and it just goes with so many different uh, clothings and in different weather. And usually I just wear it on the bracelet, but I also put it on a uh, James Bond NATO strap and I also actually fitted it with a leather strap and it always almost makes it like a dress watch. So it's just a, a, a really, really nice watch. I got not so many months ago and I'm totally happy with this watch. This is uh, definitely also a watch that won't leave my collection because it's just a legendary watch, the No Date Submariner pre-ceramic uh, bezel and I really I, I prefer the pre-ceramic bezels I, also the the maxi case that the uh, Rolex uh, do today I just think it becomes too big so moving on to another legendary dive watch which also has a, a history with the uh, with James Bond this is of course the Omega Seamaster so this is the James Bond watch the automatic Omega Seamaster and this is one was my actually my my first luxury watch, my first high-end Swiss luxury watch, and I just enjoy, I just enjoy this. The, 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 the clasp is one of the, the best that has ever been made, and the bracelet is just amazing. The whole design, how thin it is, and the helium escape valve, and the color uh, on this watch. Also, the, the wave dial you can see here is just amazing. Everything just really works with this watch. I hear some people complain about the red tip on the second hand. I don't at all. I really like it. The only problem I have with this watch is actually turning the, the bezel. It's not that easy to turn the bezel on this watch. So, But uh, also you can see the hour markings are just starting to become a little yellow, which is really, really cool because it just gives this uh, Omega Seamaster a really nice vintage kind of look. So I really, really enjoy it this Omega Seamaster 300. Definitely also a watch that won't leave my collection, also because it's not in production anymore. So this uh, this is kind of a legendary watch. I have reviewed all three watches here, uh, if you're interested in getting a closer look. So this watch I bought this summer in uh, Las Vegas and I have the original rubber strap on it. This is the, uh, the Takoya Aquaracer Caliber 5. Uh, a very very nice kind of futuristic looking dive watch what I really fell for with this watch is that it's also very very slim very thin also the white dial I really like the the kind of uh, textured kind of uh, white dial you get here a very very uh, great loom also uh, the, the whole bezel design is is definitely something that is different with this watch so a very casual kind of desk diver, almost dressy watch. When I put this watch on a leather strap, it almost resembles a dress watch somehow. 
So a watch I enjoy immensely and a watch that will probably for always stay in my collection as it all also holds some great memories and as you see in my collection one of my few white dialed watches. So moving on to another Swiss watch and this is the Hamilton Pan Europe Auto. So this is a re-edition of a watch that did back in 1971. This is a kind of a also a cushion case and it is it's a re-edition of a a racing watch and what I really fell for with this watch is the beautiful beautiful blue dial just see the colors here absolutely amazing and I really think the cheeky thing they did with the red second hand is just really really cool so I have it on the original leather strap which is just a very high quality leather strap a great thing about this watch is that it has a 80 hour power reserve just like the Satina I showed you in the start of this video so a Hamilton watch I enjoy very very much and Actually, in my opinion, one of, uh, definitely one of the best watches that Hamilton has have ever made. I think uh, this is just a, a perfect Hamilton watch and uh, also a watch that will definitely stay in my collection forever. A watch I enjoy very much. An, an extremely casual watch, but still also almost a dressy watch because it's just so well made and everything just falls into place with this watch. So for the last uh, watch of this walkthrough of my collection, we go on to another GMT watch. This is my, my second go-to watch when we're talking about tracking two time zones. This is the Christopher Ward C90 World Timer watch. And I, I just need to show you guys the, the case back. So this is just a beautiful, beautiful decorated movement by Christopher Ward. And here you actually have the different time zones, the, the airports, because this watch is a very special piece where you can actually set a different second time zone with the GMT hand, but you can also uh, actually choose between these, I think it's 24 uh, airports. So you can uh, choose between 24 of the biggest airports in the world, and then you can adjust your time to that airport if you're flying there. So just kind of a gimmick, and this isn't exactly like a real world timer, it's more like a GMT watch with a a nice uh, kind of crazy complication with the whole airport setting. I have never seen this before and I think it's just a, a very cool uh, invention by Christopher Ward. So for what you're getting with this watch, I think it's absolutely a steal for a dressy world timer or dual time zone watch. I, ex I enjoy this watch a lot. Also the hand, the design of the hands is just great. Uh, the whole uh, color scheme with the blue and the white uh, Kind of showing morning and night is just amazing and it just keeps on running also a signed crown here you will find a review of this watch as well as these two watches also on my channel so i hope you enjoyed this rather quick walkthrough of my watch collection i have a lot of more watches coming in and stay tuned for the second edition the second uh, kind of uh, watch collection video where i will would like to talk about my watch goals this will be released very soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed looking at my watches. What do you think? What do I need in my collection? Please leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this uh, video. Remember to hit the, hit the subscribe button. You can find it uh, down here at the right corner. It's the logo button. When you hit this, you can subscribe to my channel. Remember to leave me a comment, write me an email, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.